A summary of Nelson Mandela's long walk to freedom. I have walked that long road to freedom. I have tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way. But I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come. But I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibilities, and I dare not linger, for my long walk is not ended. Nelson Mandela Nelson Mandela's autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, is a timeless classic that offers invaluable lessons for leaders of today. The book, which chronicles Mandela's journey from being a young boy in a remote village in South Africa to becoming the leader of one of the most significant political movements of the 20th century, is a compelling testimony to his resilience, courage, and unwavering commitment to justice and equality. Part 1 Childhood The first part of the book focuses on Nelson Mandela's childhood and early years, growing up in a rural area of South Africa. He describes his family background and the traditions and customs of his tribe, the Kosa people. Mandela was born into a family of authority, but his father's death and a series of misfortunes as described in the book led to his upbringing under the care of his uncle. One of the recurring themes in this section of the book is the importance of education. Mandela attended a primary school run by a missionary school and later went to a secondary school where he encountered systemic racism and discrimination. Mandela's experiences in the school system would later shape his views on social justice and equality. Part 2. Johannesburg in Part 2. Mandela's journey takes us to Johannesburg, where he began to work as a law clerk while studying for a degree at the University of South Africa. This was a time of great social and political upheaval in South Africa, with the white minority government introducing increasingly repressive laws aimed at enforcing racial segregation and maintaining white control over the country's resources. Mandela became involved in the African National Congress ANC, a political movement that aimed to dismantle apartheid and establish a democratic state. The book highlights the importance of political activism and the power of collective action in achieving change. Mandela became involved in political protests and campaigns, leading to his being arrested and jailed and public action leading to his detention in Robben Island. Part 3. Prison Part 3 of the book covers Mandela's 27-year imprisonment on Robben Island and other locations in South Africa. This section of the book provides a brutal account of the harsh and degrading conditions that he and other political prisoners endured in prison. Despite the hardships, Mandela continued to advocate for the rights of prisoners and remained steadfast in his commitment to the struggle for democracy and justice. This section of the book highlights the importance of resilience, courage, and determination in the face of adversity and the essential role of leadership in keeping a movement together even when under great pressure. Part 4 Negotiations and Freedom The final part of the book chronicles the negotiations that led to Mandela's release from prison and South Africa's transition to a democratic state. Mandela played a significant role in these negotiations, working towards a peaceful and democratic resolution to the conflict and the establishment of a new constitution. This of the book highlights the importance of forgiveness, reconciliation, and political compromise in achieving sustainable change. Mandela's approach to a reconciliation was based on the principle that, the first thing, we need, to do is to forgive ourselves and accept that we are a product of our time. This perspective gave him the courage and strength to reach out to former adversaries and establish a new South Africa based on the principles of democracy, 
justice, and equality. Mandela offers touching leadership lessons through his life story. Standing up for what you believe in, even if it goes against the norm, can lead to great things. Mandela demonstrated this by objecting to the policies of apartheid and rising in prominence in the ANC. Building coalitions clashes with other opposing forces will often arise, and it is only through building coalitions that easy solutions will be found. Mandela proved this by leading the negotiation for South Africa's freedom with other political factions. Persistence lasting social change calls for grit, resilience, and stamina. It is never easy to see great things take off. It takes time, effort, and the lifting of many strong-willed individuals to ensure a positive outcome. Mandela's persistence to rid South African politics of apartheid demonstrates this point. Compassionate leadership Mandela took power upon release from prison, but understood the needs of the people, as well as other forces seeking power. He used compassionate leadership strategies, leading by example, and forgiving former opponents and opponents alike in the restoration of peace in the country. This belief permeated his message and allowed him to maintain a stable and effective leadership stance to lead a more inclusive, progressive, and formed democracy. Faith in other people trust accelerates change. It enables individuals to hand over projects, intentions, and goals to others who inspire their confidence. Mandela had unwavering faith that people entrusted with important tasks deliver reliably and skillfully. He charged key figures in the ANC with crucial mandates and showed the trust they needed to perform them to the best of their ability. Long Walk to Freedom is a riveting and inspirational read that reminds us of the remarkable feats humanity can accomplish through a substance over style. Through his strategies of dignified struggle, negotiating with dignity, and forgiveness, Mandela radically transformed South Africa as a whole, leading it to a new path forward. His words and works show that conscious efforts can bring about sustained change by insisting on the importance of emulating the spirit necessary to galvanize and transform societies, particularly for developing democracies. In conclusion, Long Walk to Freedom is a compelling autobiography that offers valuable lessons for leaders of today. The book highlights the importance of education, political activism, resilience, and determination in achieving change. It also underscores the need for forgiveness, reconciliation, and political compromise in building a more just and peaceful world. Mandela's life and legacy provide a powerful example of leadership in action. He was a man of great vision, courage, and humility, who believed in the power of people to effect change and the importance of building bridges across divisions of race, ethnicity, and political philosophy. As leaders face the challenges of the 21st century, they would do well to take to heart the lessons of Mandela's life and the message of his autobiography. At its heart, Long Walk to Freedom is a story of hope and faith in the human spirit and a testament to the power of leadership to shape the course of history.